On tonight's show, we're talking about the release of Destiny, a fall TV preview, and The Rock as Black Adam. Of course, horrible movie review and quick hits. Stay tuned. <laughs> Round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. Think though, Beverly Hills Cop, Robocop crossover needs to happen. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Words to My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. You. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. <laughs> you, you've gone a little light on your choreography the past couple weeks. What's what's the deal, man? I like to give it a little subtility in the terror of Chewbacca Chainsaws. Because you know, Chewbacca Chainsaws really speaks for itself. You just made up that really? word, subtility. What? So you said subtility. I like to give some that's subtility. Not a, that's, that's, not it's a word. that's a real word. Subtleness would be the word you wanted. Subtility works as well. It does not. English majors, let us know in comments down below that he is. I happen to be an English major. So I have a degree in English, you. in fact. <laughs> your peers will judge you accordingly. <laughs> <laughs> so... I, yeah. accept, I accept criticisms only from masters and above. <laughs> <laughs> so anybody with a doctorate, please tell Brendan why he's wrong. <laughs> but yeah, so it is our entertainment show this week, uh, I guess because it's Monday, and we do this every week. So we're going to talk about fantasy football. All right, we're not really going to. That's going to be for Thursday. And we, we have plenty of fantasy football to talk about on Thursday. But tonight you saw what we're going to be talking about. Let's jump straight into it and get off the way we get off every week. And that is with the horrible movie of the week. I know, I know, I know. Don't just just pretend it didn't happen and let's keep moving. <laughs> I, I I was like, let's get off to a good start. But then I thought it's like it's not really a good start because it's a horrible movie of the week. And then I was like, wait, now I got to say it again. Darn it. Let's just keep moving. Maybe Brendan won't notice. Maybe he wasn't paying attention. And of course, just give me the, the evil laugh and let's get this horrible movie started. <laughs> yes, yes, and so it was not only we're not only going to do the horrible movie of the week, but it's the horrible intro of the week too. Maybe I'll just do that every week and make it like a bit, so that I didn't just mess up right there. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, maybe. Not. <laughs> but so this week I have watched a movie. Uh, I watched the movie Hard Rain. And this is starring Christian Slater and Morgan Freeman, as well as Randy Quaid, are all in it. Minnie Driver, I believe, is the female lead in this movie whoa, as whoa, well. Whoa, 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 Morgan Freeman? Morgan Freeman's in this movie. In a horrible movie of the week? I'm sorry, Morgan, but you landed there. If I was watching Shawshank Redemption this week, you would not be in the horrible movie of the week. But this is... This is My world has been turned upside down. Like, I'm sorry. I, I mean, if I, it makes I, me feel any better... i treated Morgan good. Freeman as a guarantee of... You know, adequate or above. But if it makes you feel any better, his silky smooth voice is still awesome in the movie. Okay. If it makes you feel any better. Okay. And there's a lot of rain, so he keeps it together very well. But he wears this weird dangly earring. We'll get into that. We'll get into that. So, the movie I watched this week was Hard Rain. And uh, the basic synopsis of the plot is uh, it follows... It's in a little sleepy, I'm going to guess Midwest town, somewhere around the Mississippi, that just so happens to have a river and a dam blocking the river from flooding the town. And it's raining really hard. Hmm. Hmm. And uh, this movie starts off with probably the worst. Uh, you know how in a lot of movies they'll make these really detailed models and they'll do the flyovers of the models and make it look like a city, but it's not really a city. You know what I'm talking about? Most of the time yeah, you yeah, they can't did really with, tell. Uh, that was the big thing for Star Wars. They did that really well. That's Yeah, was and most of the time you can't tell that often. But um, this was probably, the beginning was probably the worst mini model. It was like a five-year-old uh, put it together. And like it looked like, I, I swear, in certain spots you could see glue stains where the trees were being held down. I mean, I didn't even think they needed to do that anymore because 
you could put a camera on a plane. <laughs> Helicopters? <laughs> you yeah. know, you I, I actually have plane. a friend that that's part of his job. He does flyover photography and videography on planes. So. Well, obviously they did not hire him for this movie because <laughs> it was the worst. So, so the movie starts off, you're kind of in this small town, rain is hard. Uh, they're kind of showing that the streets are starting to flood a little bit here and there. Uh, this armored truck driver is tasked with going up and down to a lot of the major banks, picking up all the money just in case floods hit along this route. And lo and behold, somebody wants to rob them. So that somebody is Morgan Freeman and his group. Uh, they meet up with them. And uh, yeah, let's just, uh, without going too much in there, uh, wait, Betty White is actually... Wait, 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 wait. Was this a Shawshank Redemption prequel? <laughs> this is what this got how him he gets in into jail. <laughs> this is what got him into jail. Yes, yes. So we're just gonna go with that and makes the movie go jump up like three stars if that's the case. <laughs> I mean, I know that he he was in there for murder, but I guess maybe he killed someone on one of these these hey, high stakes high. Hey, uh, we'll get into it. We'll we'll get into it. So yeah. So um, Betty White's in this movie in the beginning. She's the mean old lady protecting her territory. She's not going to evacuate because she's not scared of no floodwaters. Yeah. Yeah, that's not good. So, um, well, I mean, but, she's old enough. What, what she got to lose? Exactly. So, these people, they end up getting robbed. Stuff goes wrong. Morgan Freeman wants it to be peaceful. He wants them just to, you know, say, okay, there's no possible help. Blah, blah, blah. We can't get anywhere because there's all the rain. They'll give us the money. Well, stuff doesn't go out down like that. So Christian Slater is the uh, truck driver, or armored truck driver. His partner gets killed, and he decides to hide the money. So what is it about after this? It's about chasing down Christian Slater to find out where this money is. And I just got to say this. In a flooded town, the man with the jet ski is king. I would suppose so. Because <laughs> all, all of a sudden these guys just have a couple jet skis around and they're like, hey, we don't need to swim after him. We'll just jet ski after him. And you have a bunch of really stupid chases that happen <laughs> on jet skis. Do they have a, a lake or something around here? You said that there was, I guess, a they, dam. They, they they do show this dam, and they keep going back to it, and I'll get to that in a little bit. Because like there's a couple really stupid parts to this dam story, how they integrate it in there. But, yeah, so... So he's I'm trying to wonder from, why they have jet skis to begin with, where they are. Yeah, they, they kind of come out of nowhere, if I remember correctly. They're just like, hey, jet skis, let's take those and chase after the guy who stole all the money. So we can steal all the money. Yes. Well, I mean, if there's a lake, uh, there make you might have it to go out jet skiing. I, I don't know. I didn't but, see any lake in this movie, except for the lake that the town becomes after. Because it's, it's still flooding, 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 flooding. So, okay. Okay, so... Um, so they're running around, uh, they chase him with their jet skis a little bit, he ends up getting, like, knocked out, and the police happen by him. They pick him up, and they don't know what's wrong with him, they just see an unconscious guy with a big head wound, and they bring him to the police station, put him in a police cell, and, uh, they interrogate him a little bit, and he's like, well, I was this armored truck driver, they were gonna steal his money, there was three million dollars in this truck... Uh, you got to help me go back and get it. And the police say, well, no, you just stay here. We'll go get the money. And for some reason, one of the cops locks the door on him. Uh, so he's stuck in a, uh, a jail cell. Now, you might think, why would they lock him up? He has done nothing wrong. I thought why that would they take well. him in to begin with? He's well, just got a head wound. Well, they <laughs> took him in because there was no other safe place to, to leave him. They couldn't just leave him floating around in the water. Yeah, so that made sense. You know, like... Take him in and interrogate him for having a head wound. You yeah, take you just, him in, you know. treat him. Like yeah, so yeah, so that happens. So the cops go out, and and right when the cops are leaving the building, I thought to myself, why would they lock this building when there is a flood, and they know that it's the dam is in danger of breaking, and what is this guy gonna do if the whole police station floods? And by the way, there's only two cops or three cops in this entire town, and they're all out looking for these uh, armored car robbers. What's going to happen to him? And then literally, literally five minutes later, oh, the dam bursts a little bit more and he almost gets stuck in the police station. And now I didn't know this about lighting, but apparently if you get on police station roofs, open one little hatch, you can pull out the lighting and pull somebody out of a, of a overflowing building. Because that's okay. how easy it is to get from inside to outside of a police station. Just that. Yeah, because no one would in a small town where there's only three cops, 
who apparently liked to just all go out at once after and one. It wasn't even. One it wasn't pass. a cop who. It wasn't a cop who saved him either. It was a lady. That was mini yeah. driver. So yeah. I'm just saying, like, so so no one would ever think to, hey, let me try and bust out of this place, you know, through the ceiling. No, no one's ever going to try and get someone out, but maybe it just doesn't come. As easy as just, just pushing forward, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I would say, know. you know, normally cops would see that, but we're talking about a town where there's, you, you said, three guys, and they happen to be like, hey, you know what's a good idea? Let's all let's all leave. Let's, let's all just go. Let's go. Nobody needs the police in the police station. Let's all just go. <laughs> so yeah. So okay. So he gets out of there. This woman saves him, and uh, the armored truck robbers show up again. Morgan Freeman's chasing them down again. And so what they decide to do is they see a car kind of floating down the road. They decide to hide in said car and kind of float down the road. And it seems like it's a great plan. It's working. They're floating along nice and safely, staying away from everything. And then all of a sudden they're like, hey, let's get out of this car. Why? And it's like, I guess. And then they're floating by. And then all of a sudden they see this transformer that's getting really close to touching the water and electrocuting everything around it. So they're like, oh, we got to get out of the water. Electricity. Oh. Here, let's climb up this thing. And they climb up a metal pole rod thing. Uh, why, why Why? did they get out of the car? I, I don't know. Mm, didn't make much sense to me. They were like, hey, let's just get out now. It's like, no, you know stay in the car. Keep floating down away from the danger. You know what else is resistant to, to electric shock? Cars. No, not inside a, a submerged car that's floating. Yeah. It protects against lightning. You get, lightning can hit the car. What's yeah, the difference? But, but but if the electricity goes into the water and it's surrounding you inside the car, it still doesn't matter. Only if the water's inside the car. Is the water, water inside the car? It was floating. It was it was not floating inside. It was kind of floating midway through there. All right. It, 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 it was stupid you know, that they got out of the car. They would have floated to safety had they just stayed in the car for two more minutes. All right. That's all I got to say. And then they climbed up the middle, metal rod. Stupid is as stupid does. Okay. And then you know they're what, like, oh. physics professor. <laughs> for some reason, tell us whether we'd be safe inside this car or not, so that everyone knows, for just in case we ever have to be floating in a car in a flood. With well, transformers are up. Okay, yeah. So, <laughs> so they do that, okay, and it's like, all right, they're like, oh, wow, we got to get off this pole. We stupidly climbed up a metal pole. And then one of the bad guys happens to pass by and climbs up the metal pole and does get electrocuted. So that was like, okay, really. Um, and then... Clearly... Clearly, this electricity only targets bad people. The innocent <laughs> survive. Bad people find her. The wicked die. Yeah, so... Yeah, so so the movie's coming to its end. The police meet up with the, the robbers and the, the armor truck driver. He's like, okay, well, they get a hold of these old... Betty White actually gets kidnapped. It's weird. But um, the, she gets to end up in the mix. And it turns out the cops want to kill everybody so that they can actually take the money. And they call the guy from the dam down... And they're like, hey, stop watching the dam, which we've been saying all movie is in critical condition and needs somebody to relieve the pressure every now and then. Why don't you come down here and hang out with us? And then the dam breaks while they try to steal the money from the guys. All right. Yeah. It, it's I know that, the electricity will get them. Yeah. Well, it's true. It will. Um, <laughs> yeah. So this whole movie, they pretty much create movie moments of excitement like – Oh, he, is it going to get out of the police station? Or, oh, is the dam going to break? Or, oh, the dam just broke. What are we going to do now? It, by sheer stupidity. So, yeah. Yeah. And I do got to say this in there. There's at least five or six moments where they're just hanging out. Like, it's a quiet moment. You know, you have one character either by themselves or, you know, talking with another person. And all of a sudden, these people show up on boats. Like, like right next to them, too. Like, like point blank. It's like they have some sort of weird stealth boat that makes no noise in water, and they can just kind of... Stop um, here. Stealth in an boat. area that doesn't usually have more than just rivers. I guess, river stealth boats? River stealth boats. Yeah, so... And Morgan yeah. Freeman will sell them to you. And Morgan, he will. He will. And, um, yeah, so at the very end of the movie, I just want to say this last little thing. It just kind of... S- wraps everything up in a nice little bow of how horrible this movie was. So after everything's said and done, all the bad police are pretty much taken care of, or or so they thought. The first thing they do after he thinks he's safe, Christian Slater, instead of going to the woman who saved his life and is in possible pain right there, swims over to Morgan Freeman, who they joined up team to team up against the cops. And um, it was like, hey, man, how you doing? I'm like, what are you doing, dude? 
damsel in distress or guy who wanted to kill you earlier in the movie? Hmm. Yeah. I think we know a clear answer here. Guy, guy who wanted, who to, kill wanted to kill you in the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, that Call was. Uh, get revenge. That was a. Uh, that was Hard Rain, and now Hard Rain, I picked it because it had two and a quarter stars on Netflix, and that's really bad. Really bad. You know what else has less than that? What? Titanic. All right, well, Titanic's not a bad movie, though. We, but Hard Rain is. All right. Like, for yeah, some but... reason, Titanic has two stars. Like, I don't think it's a great movie. I don't, don't get me wrong. I don't think it's a great movie, but... Have their two stars. It's not as bad as those other two star and three star movies we've seen. But so this movie is actually going to get a one and a half Chewbacca chainsaws out of five. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, that's one of the worst ratings I've given. I think I've given a zero recently, but. Yeah. So let's move out of the realm of horrible movies and move into the realm of hopefully good movies because. Recent news has come out, and apparently The Rock, who everybody thought was going to play Shazam in the new Shazam movie coming out in, I believe, 2016, it's actually a little bit of a reversal of script. It's going to be, he's going to play Black Adam, which is Shazam's nemesis. And now, Shazam, I don't think a lot of people know much about this whole Shazam series. I mean, you've seen Shazam kind of in, like, if you watch any of the Justice League cartoons, he popped up here and there as Captain Marvel. Um, yeah, I don't think he's been very, um, very popular in the last like few decades. Like now that now that they've been, uh, you know, reaching and just showing like everyone they can possibly do in some of the cartoons because they've run out of people and they just want to mm-hmm. show people. You know, people like him show up, but I, I'm, I don't remember ever even seeing like a Shazam comic book anywhere. Like I'm sure well, that they it was existed, it was but... called the Marvel family for a long time, and then they had some disputes with actual Marvel um, <laughs> about using that because it is a DC mm-hmm. Comics property, and they changed the name of it to Shazam uh, after that. So it like started I, out I know as about the Marvel family. Yeah, I mean I remember I've read up on Shazam like a, a while ago, but I just don't remember seeing much about Shazam other than like obscure like. Yeah. hardcore comic book uh, fan sources. Yeah, exactly. But I really wanted to give people a little bit of a background on Black Adam and the Shazam thing. So Black Adam actually comes from ancient Egypt about 5,000 years ago, and apparently he was this great warrior um, who, in a time of trouble, the wizard Shazam bestowed upon him powers of six gods. Now, they changed the names of the gods a couple different times because originally they were Greek gods, and then people were like, hey... If this is 5,000 years ago, that's like 2,000 years before Greek gods were around. Hmm, how does that work? Before the written ones. But also they were in Egypt. Yeah. So, so that's... I mean, those places are close there. together, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, so so he actually, he's supposed to be this warrior for good with all these powers, and he gets power hungry. Yeah, simple as that. He's like, hey, you know what? I'm stronger than everybody. I'm just going to do what I want to do. So the wizard Shazam, who gave him his powers then banishes him, and in a way to make up for his mistake, uh, gives a family of people, I think there's like three or four of them, uh, the Shazam powers. Now, it's only not until, I think recently, that they gave it to a little kid who would say Shazam and then become big Captain Marvel and everything like that. It used to be just some more normal people um, who could say those words and and get the powers. So that was that. Um, But yeah, so Shazam banished Black Adam to some other part of the universe. And it took Black Adam 5,000 years to fly all the way back to Earth. And apparently he does that. Why? I don't know. If you're like, I'm 5,000 years away, uh, I'd just be like, eh, uh, whatever, I'm not going back there. It's See, that's, that's why you don't have those kind of powers, Brian. <laughs> you don't have the drive. Because <laughs> I don't have the drive to go all the way back. Yeah. I mean, if you are stranded that far away, like, is... is I'm just trying to think of what your possible motivation... I mean, yeah, maybe revenge. But after 5,000 years, you think that would go away. You no, think after like a thousand years, you're like, oh, well, I'm tired of flying, you know. Let's just, nope. let's just, ah, 5, there's, there's a nice planet over there. Like, every <laughs> second he's like, I can't believe I'm still flying. That's a hell of a grudge. space. That is a hell of a grudge. So You jerk. <laughs> that's pretty much Black Adam's, that's his background. That's why he's evil. Now, they do have parts, uh, they've changed up his, his beginning stories a couple times. Uh, I've seen parts where he wasn't sent away for 5,000 years. He was, like, imprisoned in Earth for 5,000 years. I've also seen parts where he's, like, the, the the ruler of a... 
I can't remember. It's supposed to be a North African nation, like Kazabog or something like that. And he's trying to protect his people from the influences of ever, the modern world and stuff like that. And so they try to paint him in different lights. But I think the the main way of his origin story is this whole gets the powers, gets banished, comes back and wants to fight. So, yeah, that's pretty interesting. But The Rock is actually going to play Black Adam. And now I kind of like this because as Shazam, we would only see The Rock in the movie what, half the time, maybe maybe a little more than half the time, but you got to expect some of that screen time would be devoted to him in his kid form. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and you're still going to see less of him if he's a villain, aren't you? Well, you never know how they'll take it, but, you know, I think he'll, he'll be good as Black Adam. The look, he's got the look. I mean, a big muscle-bound dude. And you know what? I've never seen The Rock really play that bad guy, I don't think, in any movie. Now, he was the Scorpion King in... Yeah. In one of them, but that was like an Egyptian really guy. Yeah, so he, this is right up his alley. Yeah, of Egyptian, lots of Egyptian bad guys for the rock. Yeah, so I, I just I, I like the idea of them putting him in as Black Adam rather than Shazam. I was excited to see him as Shazam, but I think I'm even more excited to see him. As well, do we know who's going to be Shazam? No, that hasn't come out yet. So there's still lots of lots of things to be announced. Um, but you know. I think it's a good start for this movie. Uh, a little or known franchise. But I don't know. Let us know what you think. Do you think The Rock would be better as Shazam or Black Adam? Am I right? Are you wrong? How, you like how I said that? All right. Uh... Hit us up in comments down below. <laughs> of course, at Words My Face on Twitter, Words My Face at gmail.com, Google Plus, and Facebook. All good ways to get a hold of us. Let us know what you think. And, uh, you know, we'll talk about it a little later, too. So um, let's move it on to the next story of the night. And that is really because it is fall. It is the beginning of September. Not only does that bring us great NFL football, but it brings us all the new TV shows. Uh, These are usually the shows that are up for, like, the Emmys and stuff start right about now. This is really the sweeps month, and usually the big guns come out in September, and you really see what's going on. So we're going to talk about some of the ones opening up either in the next couple weeks or I think one or two of them start in October. But let's start it off. And I broke it down into three different categories. Uh, Network cable TV and premium channels. Uh, premium channels being the HBO and Showtimes and, and of that ilk. So let's start off with Network and probably the most sh- the show I'm most excited about seeing from any of these slate is Gotham. That'll be starting in two weeks on Fox where it kind of gives an origin story while Bruce Young is still young. Kind of giving more of an origin Bruce story. Bruce Wayne of, uh, is still young. Who did I say? You said Bruce Young. Bruce Wayne Bruce is still young. young. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a bad one. Uh, it kind of gives an origin story of uh, Ben Gordon and how he becomes commissioner and a couple of the other villains and how they start popping up. So I'm really interested in seeing this one. You have The Walking Dead Season 5 coming out on AMC. A lot of season people... Season 5? They're already oh, up to I'm Season sorry. 5? Damn it, I jumped from, from, I jumped from network to cable. Okay, let's pretend I didn't just say that. Let's just say The Blacklist Season 2, that was a pretty cool show. You have James Spader I'm pretending and nothing. You've said it, you let the cow out of the bag, and now Pretend! I'm... Pretend! <laughs> ah, we're pretending. I didn't just make a big mistake. So The Blacklist Season 2 is coming out, and that was a cool show with James Spader where he was this international criminal kind of helping the feds catch other international criminals, and you don't quite know his motives. He's kind of mysterious and sneaky. I only watched like five or six episodes, but I do got to admit those five or six episodes I watched were all very entertaining, so... Hey, if you were into the show, I can understand. And I haven't seen it. Say nothing. I don't care. Nothing from Bridget. Not for that one. <laughs> the next one we so have is on The Walking Dead. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, don't, don't no pretend, pretend. <laughs> but then we have Agents of Shield season two is coming out, and now this show I think started kind of mid-season last year as kind of a pilot test run. They weren't sure how well it would work, and this year I think it's good. How could they not run. know how well it would work? You knew oh, it was going to work well. Like, even if it was a crappy show, it was going to, you know, do well because of yeah. the names on it, just because it's the, how big the Avengers is. Yeah, and, then, and and people saw from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1, anytime a Marvel movie came out and changed the Marvel Universe the way it was looking, actually the show would take that as part of it. So this year is going to be interesting because there's actually no slated new Marvel movies until the very, very end of uh, the season, which is in, like, May. So we're going to see them really be able to take off with their own storyline and, and see how they develop these these young agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, the next one is uh, The Flash. That'll be premiering on the CW. 
am interested in seeing this one. This is a spinoff of another show, which Arrow, season three coming out. Both cool DC comic properties. Actually, I've heard a lot of good things about both of them, so I'm going to start picking up on Arrow because season two, I believe, is out on Netflix very soon, so I'll watch the first two seasons. As we've been saying, a lot of superhero TV you're you're talking about on just the networks. On just the networks, so that's pretty interesting. And then the last one, another superhero one, is uh, Constantine on NBC, and we've talked about this till we were blue in the face, so you know I love this show. It's going to be awesome. Constantine is one of my... one of the the coolest uh, of all the offshoot comics, because it started off, was it Vertigo it started off with, and then it got enveloped into DC? No, no, no. Vertigo is like a subsidiary of uh, DC, so it was, like, issue one, they had to incorporate it with DC, even though it doesn't really make sense to be part of the DC universe, that was DC's policy, that even their subsidiary comics had to somehow link themselves to the DC universe. So, well, so. so but they, they are linked there, and it kind of takes some more of the dark side of the DC comics, and uh, it'll be interesting to see. So let's move that over to Cable, uh, Sons of Anarchy Season 7. That'll be the f- last season for Sons of Anarchy, and it looks like it's going to be a bloodbath all year. So if you are a Sons of Anarchy fan, uh, you'll enjoy this one. Or if you're just a fan of guys on bikes shooting other people, you'll probably like this one too. I don't. Or you could go play Road Rash. <laughs> Old school game Road Rash. I would play Road Rash, just to be honest. Maybe Sons of Anarchy is honest. honest. Sons of Anarchy is awesome, but Road Rash was way more awesome. Yes, that's what I'm going to say. And then we have Season Dead. Season Dead. All right, hey, so I'm just going to go right? ahead and let you take over the show from here on. I'll just put my notes right up to the camera so you can read them, because apparently I cannot read a word that I've written on this on this page. The Walking Dead Season 5. Season Dead, Walking 5. Yes, it's coming. <laughs> but yeah, so Walking Dead season five is out there. A lot of people um, still absolutely love this show. The video games are doing as good as ever. Uh, the Telltale games, uh, I think they just finished up their season two of the video games. So it, it's just a, it's a really cool way of showing the human drama in one of the most horrific circumstances ever. So I enjoyed that. Um, then we have the League season six. If you are a fantasy football fan, you have probably seen all the seasons of this. I really enjoy it. It's funny. It kind of tries to pull in some of the fantasy football that's going on, even though they filmed it last year, so I don't know how they would really say anything from this year. But, you know, if you don't pay attention too, too much, it's it's a really funny show. Um, and then we have Z Nation, which will actually be a zombie apocalypse slash the zombies still have some sort of consciousness TV show on sci Smart zombies? Yeah, it's kind of weird because, like, they say there's this big zombie infection that takes over the world, and there's one survivor left, and these people are trying to take this one survivor to a place where they can maybe, you know, see the blood and everything and replicate that and make a cure for everybody else. So if everybody else is a zombie, then I guess they have to be sort of smart zombies, don't they? Uh, They're smart zombies that haven't committed to being zombies. They're, like, they're infected, I guess, half zombies? Yeah, I don't know. We're going to have to watch the show to find out. So I guess we will. And that'll be on Sci-Fi. I believe that one's in October. And probably my most excited, uh, the one I'm most excited about at least, show coming out is Star Wars Rebels. Come on. This is the uh, CGI animated you already, show. Oh, hold on. You already it's said Gotham Disney was the one you were most excited about. You can't All have right. two. All right, fine. My most excited on network is Gotham. My most excited on cable is Star Wars Rebels. Ha ha. Ha ha. Yes, because I love the Clone Wars show, and this is done by the same people who did the Clone Wars. So I, I just I expect it to be amazing. Just absolutely amazing. And let's roll that over into premium TV. And this is the uh, you know the Showtimes, the Cinemaxes, the HBOs. And now they have more interesting cycles for their TV shows. They usually run them in 10 episode, you know, 10 weeks, and then they switch to another show. So... These are really just the ones that are starting up for the September, and that is Boardwalk Empire for HBO. That is going into season five, I believe. Uh, that is a really cool show. Jim Belushi is awesome. Jim Belushi. All right, I'm just going to stop talking. I said Jim Belushi. Yeah, well, okay, so so Boardwalk Empire. <laughs> I think I've seen all of one episode of that before, but it was cool. I just have only seen one episode because I don't have HBO or whatever it's on. But uh, Jim Belushi's yeah. not in it, by the way. It's Steve Buscemi. 
Not even there's close. the guy. <laughs> there's a guy that usually plays a really creepy kind of gangster in other movies. Yeah, he's one. Of the, he's the mayor, I think. In that show? Yeah. I'm trying to remember who the mayor is. I can't remember who the mayor is. I think the mayor gets killed at some point. But or someone but they, like of like high importance that like kind of runs the city one way or the other. Well, it's just pretty cool because it shows like some of the origin stories, like uh, uh, Al Capone when he's younger is in it. You know. Um, it's, you know, the Prohibition era in Atlantic City because that's where a lot of the booze came through. So it's pretty cool. And then we have Homeland on Showtime, which is a very interesting show where, like, this guy gets captured in the war in Iraq. He was a soldier, and then he comes back, and they're not sure if he's a traitor or whatever he is. And eh, it's been pretty cool for the past three seasons. So those are your shows to check out for this fall. I know you probably won't be able to watch them all because I'm certainly not going to be able to. But that's what the beauty of On Demand is, isn't it? Isn't it? It's where the, eventually, it's you can watch all of this year's shows. <laughs> eventually. Eventually. But yeah, hit us up. Let us know if there's any shows we missed out on or if we're not giving enough credit to some of these shows. Hit us up in comments down below. Of course, at Where's My Face on Twitter, Where's My Face at gmail.com, Google Plus, Facebook. Always good ways to get a hold of us and let us know what you think, positive or negative. And I, pro- I promise you, I will learn how to speak before the end of this episode. Okay, I'm not gonna promise that. I take back that promise. Because that can't keep his promises like that. I can't that. keep my promises. Yeah, it's just not gonna happen. But you know what I can promise you is that it's time for quick hits of the night. Oh, I got you that time. Uh, if you watch the show, you know we have this little game back and forth where I try to surprise him with it sometimes, and sometimes I lead him into it. But that time I surprised him with it. It's always fun. And so let's talk about the first quick hit. And that is Batman Arkham Knight. Uh, they just reset a, a release date for this game, and it will be June 2nd, 2015. It was originally slated for October 14th, but they were not ready for it, so they pushed it back. Which, you know, if it's in the effort of making a better product, I'm all for it. Gives me a little more time to get a PS4, too. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's all Brennan has to say about that one. Let's move it on oh, to the next. <laughs> Quick hit! And that is Terminator is actually... They're going to be coming out with three more movies sometime soon. Uh, Terminator Genesis has been the last one uh, announced. Three more? Yeah, well, because Terminator Genesis is coming out. And then they've announced two sequels to Terminator Genesis, uh, which is going to be pretty interesting. I think they're kind of throwing away the Terminator Salvation, the Christian Bale movie, like that didn't happen or something. Which actually wasn't a bad movie, but... So we're about to get three more Terminator movies. This is about to be be ten movie franchises. Yeah, some. I, mm, it's I, Terminator's I, turning into Star Wars. Maybe. They, they when, when's the prequels off. coming out? Are these the prequels? Maybe these are the Genesis. <laughs> Genesis, you know, the star. Uh, who, who knows? But let's move it on to next quick hit. And that is Assassin's Creed is coming out with an America's collection, and that'll bundle Assassin's Creed Three, Assassin's Creed Four, and Assassin's Creed Three Liberation into one package that you can purchase. And that'll be out October 28th, I believe. On what systems? On all of them. Including the Wii U? Probably not. Nothing comes out on the Wii U. All those games are out on the Wii U. Oh, are they then probably on the Wii U too then? So I mean, I mean, I mean Ubisoft has said that they... I, I'm wondering because they have all those games out on it, but Ubisoft said that they weren't going to release any more mature games on the Wii U because they weren't selling. Hmm. Well, we'll, we'll see. Because I, mean, I imagine those would sell I, on the Wii U. If you have a Wii U, that would be one of the games you want to get. So, I mean, I have a Wii U, and I haven't picked it up just because I, I haven't played the other Assassin's Creed games. But, well, I mean, I'm interested in them. I just haven't done it. So yeah, I got I don't know, maybe everyone else is like me. They're just like, well, I haven't played the other ones. Hmm. I don't know. So is this going to get you to play them? Hmm? Maybe. Maybe hmm. if I can get all three at once for a good price, that might that might be a good motivator to get into the series. So There you go. There you go. And let's move it on to the next quick hit. Oh, my, my quick hits have been off. My my voice just is... Uh, I'm sorry. Subpar quick hits. I haven't been able to talk. Uh, but let's just move it on. Robert Downey Jr. recently came out and said that there are no plans for an Iron Man 4. Uh, now, he is signed on to do the next two Avengers movies, but it's looking like that might be about the end of his run for, for Iron Man. Hmm. But, I mean, as long as he keeps popping up in the Avengers movies, I guess I don't really care too much because... 
As I recall, the original plan was just to do the first Iron Man movie and then just have that as the lead into the, the Avengers series, but because Iron Man was so popular, they did the other um, two movies. So it makes sense that they're now, like, they did a, they did three, which was yeah. a lot, right? This will be the sixth movie that uh, t- Robert Downey Jr. does Tony Stark, so I can yeah. understand he might be getting a little bit tired of playing the same character. Uh, and he's done it, it so well. So they, they already did three Iron Man movies, and they're, they've moved on to the Avengers movies. It, it's time to focus on the Avengers movies. I agree. Sounds good to me. Um, and let's move it on to the last quick hit of the night. And that is Guardians of the Galaxy is joining only 32 other movies in American movie history to dominate the box office four straight weeks. Uh, it came in this week with $10.2 million, bringing its... Six week total to twenty two hundred ninety four point six million. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles two is right behind them with six point five, and if I stay, it comes in third with five point eight, which is I'm, interesting. I'm honestly surprised. I'm yeah. surprised that um, that this movie, of all the big uh, movies we've seen in the last couple of years, is one of the ones to do that well, that dominant. Yeah, and it, it's even more surprising that it wasn't the first four weeks because usually you would think that the first four weeks would be the biggest. But, like, they open up number one, and then they drop to number two because Turtles open up after that, and they've just held the title after that. So Yeah, I guess one of the things that's helping it is, I mean, what other big movies have really come out in the last few weeks? Just the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So it's been kind and of that, slow. Yeah, and that, that dropped a second because it had kind of bad reviews. I don't know. I heard whatever about it, so... You know, not not huge competition. Yeah. The one other movie, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, so that's that's the quick hits of the night. And you don't have to do the sound effect. All right, do it. Anyway. And let's move it on to the last segment of the show, and that will be our video game segment. And we are going to talk about Destiny, just because Destiny makes me so giddy. Oh man, this game looks awesome. I mean, it is getting probably more press than any other game I've ever seen in my life. Now, Halo 3, when that movie, when that movie, when that game came out, was super hyped. I mean, you couldn't go anywhere without seeing commercials and stuff like that. But really, can you can you think of a video game that you've seen more commercials for than Destiny? No. Um, and not only that, it's the Madden? commercials are pretty. Man, uh, well, yeah, okay. Over time, you've seen more commercials, but every year they don't blitz quite as much as as Destiny's doing right now. Yeah, I but mean, Destiny, I mean, they they know that's going to hit big. Yeah. Because it's it's Halo if Halo was better. Yeah. I mean... I, I, <laughs> and, and, the I mean <laughs> and the commercials that they're showing you are, have been so cool, where it's a group of like three or four people walking around and like they're just jumping into crazy spots and like, let's go to Earth, let's go to Venus, let's go to Mars. And that is what's going to be so cool about this game. This is going to be Halo, where you can jump around planets all you want. I mean, it sounds awesome. It's going to be Halo if Halo was better, like I said. And cross-platform. Not only that, that's actually going to be... It's not going to be cross-platform immediately, I don't think. But still, it's... Halo was exclusive. Yeah. That limits its market. Like, even yeah. though the, it, it helped sell the 360 amazingly, and the 360 had a huge share, but that's still limited, you know? But this is, but this is going to be cross-platform right away, though. Yeah. It's actually and, coming out on all four platforms right now. Uh, maybe, I don't think there was a Wii release, though. I thought it was just, yeah, PlayStation, uh, PC, and uh, and uh, Xbox One. Well, you but, even have Microsoft coming out and saying, uh, the, the CEO of Microsoft came out and said that it'll be an awesome game even if you only have an Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3. And mm-hmm. it's kind of funny that Microsoft is really throwing their hat behind them because I, I don't think they're mad at Bungie for kind of leaving the exclusivity. But they can't be super happy with them because think about what would happen to Xbox if they had Destiny all by itself. That's a game changer, in my opinion. That well, might just, move it, me. That's like having Halo. That was like having Halo last generation. Destiny is there, and Destiny, I think, is even going to make a bigger impact just because they're. I think they're smartly coming to PlayStation first with the big stuff because mm-hmm. the PlayStation owners, um, especially the guys that have been close and stuck with just PlayStation, are thinking, man. We wish we had Halo. That was the only thing we were missing. We kept trying to look for everything that was a replacement for Halo, right? But now we finally have the real replacement for Halo. That's that's a true predecessor. Yeah, yeah. or not predecessor, successor, successor to the Halo franchise. That's going to be on their system. And, and this is already this game has already been the most uh, reserved new IP ever. 
So, I mean, maybe like some of the Call of Duties have had more reservations, you know, and that's where you pre-order a game, pre-orders, reserves, uh, different, same thing. But it, it's amazing how quickly this game is going to sell. I think you're probably going to see some crazy like a $500 million sales mark the first day. Uh, you're going to see probably thousands of people. Hell, if I had a PS4, I would not be going into work tomorrow because I'd be playing Destiny. I have a coworker who has already said that he he took off of work for today for tomorrow right so that he could play it so I think he's getting his PS4 tonight too um, in order to play or whatever uh, getting the bundle um, hmm. to play it so so yeah Destiny just looks awesome so in recap awesome commercials plus awesome planning hunting hunting hopping plus awesome developer in Bungie plus awesome predecessor in Halo Three equals revolutionary game. Or at least solid, awesome gameplay. And honestly, <laughs> like I've been saying, because I don't know how revolutionary, because it, it's going to be like a new... I'm telling you, this, this co-op, the way they're... Because they're, you're going to be... It's going to be like Warcraft co-op. I mean, not war, World of Warcraft co-op. Like, you're going to be walking around, but it's going to be a shooter, and you're going to jump in and do missions together, and they're going to be like raids and quests. Oh, okay. It's going to be like the first legit MMORPG shooter but it's not going to quite be an MMORPG shooter. It, it's going to be its own genre. I, I, I really expect really big things out of this game. I'm very excited to play it. Yeah, I'm... Uh, and I haven't played many shooter games in a long time. Like, I was big on, on Halo 3, uh, and that was the last one I really... Pl- like, I played a little bit of the others. That was the last one I was really big on. Um, I just haven't had a lot of time for a lot of shooters and lost a lot of interest after a little while um, with some of the newer shooters, but this one looks awesome. So yeah. I might get back into shooters. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. But let us know, are you looking forward to it? Is it overhyped? Is it underhyped? I don't know how it could be underhyped. Uh, is this going to be, like I said, the most revolutionary game ever? Or I didn't say that. That's actually taken a little bit too far. It's going to be a great game. It's going to change the way we look at games, just like the way Halo 3 changed the way we looked at games, just the way Halo... It, it seems like every generation since Xbox has been out, Halo has changed the way we looked at games, or Bungie has. Halo on the first Xbox was revolutionary. Halo 3 on Xbox 360 really took us into the online uh, multiplayer for everybody. I know Halo 2 really started that, but 360 was the first real, real legit platform for that. And then we're going to see this on the next gen, PS4s, Xbox Ones, a new a new way to play shooters. And I couldn't be more excited, to be honest with you. So let us know what you think. Hit us up, comments down below, of course, at Words For My Face on Twitter, Words For My Face at gmail.com, Google+, and Facebook. All good ways to get a hold of us. But you know what? I think that about does it for tonight's show. Yeah. We uh, we had some fun. We did, did you have fun? Oh, I hope you had fun. If you didn't have fun, what's your problem? You can't have fun on a fun show? Like, there's something wrong with you. Not us. It's not that we're not funny or I can't speak tonight. That's not it at all. That should be some of the fun. Is because I couldn't speak at all. All right, you know what? As always, I'm Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire Brendan, you... and we're gonna head bang our way out of this joint. <laughs> Good night, everybody!